and uh, welcome to the launch of the AIP Foundation. I know the importance of science, not just in research, not just in education, but in everyday life, in the decisions we make, in how we understand the world, and even the cosmos. I also understand the importance of supporting science. And by partnering with the American Institute of Physics, you can go a long way toward demonstrating your own support for science. AIP advances, promotes, and serves the physical sciences for the benefit of humanity. Let's take a few minutes to look at what AIP does for science. AIP Foundation supports the mission of the American Institute of Physics by raising funds to promote student scholarships and internships, to enhance the Niels Bohr Library and Archives, and to advance the Center for the History of Physics. For almost 90 years, AIP has served the physical science community, and this AIP Foundation is a new way to show the importance of philanthropy in the sciences. AIP's Center for History of Physics highlights the efforts of the scholarly community to document, investigate, and understand the nature and origin of developments in modern physics and their impact on society through creating online exhibits and curricula, promoting women and minorities in physics, providing grants and aid to researchers in the history of science, conducting oral history interviews that are available online, hosting conferences, and the Line Starling Trimble Lecture Series at AIP together with international historians. Greg Good promotes the physical sciences and documents the cultural and biographical narratives at the core of scientific breakthroughs. AIP's Niels Bohr Library and Archives works in concert with the Center for History of Physics. In the library, which is open to the public, individuals can pursue the history of physics, astronomy, geophysics, and allied fields, including a collection of rare books, textbooks, monographs, and related publications, over 30,000 photographs and other images, over 1,500 oral histories with many of the outstanding scientists, and archival records of AIP and its member societies, along with other archival records and personal papers of a select number of scientists. There are items in this collection, um, publications either in books or in journals, that were considered fine science at the time. Perhaps it's still the case now, or perhaps it's not. And so to be able to have all of those scenes of the sort of life cycle of a science um, in one place is, um, is a fabulous resource. The library has its own blog, Ex Libris Universum, featuring highlights from the rare books and exploring how history can enhance physics teaching. All of this material benefits the students who engage in AIP's mission, especially the Society of Physics Students, featured here at their Physics Congress, popularly known as PhysCon. More than 800 chapters of undergraduate students support the scholarship and leadership of physics and astronomy students each year. Brad Conrad directs the Society of Physics Students, encouraging them to participate in internships, fellowships, and regional meetings to build community and support the next generation of scientists. In addition, Sigma Pi Sigma honors outstanding scholarship in physics and to promote an attitude of service of its members towards their fellow students, colleagues, and the public. In 2021, Sigma Pi Sigma will mark its centennial and will celebrate the milestone with a national conference slated for 2022. AIP Foundation is proud to support these programs and build a culture of philanthropy for the physical sciences. Those are just some of the big things happening at AIP. I know that in my case, science has had a huge impact on my life. When I was an undergraduate with barely a dime to my name, I walked into an underground lab at the University of Iowa, and before long we were publishing papers on waves and plasmas. Before long that led to a scholarship to Princeton University, where I completed my PhD. And even after I left the field, became a writer, those same habits of mind, those contacts, that knowledge of how to chase an idea, advanced my career in a completely different way. Uh, by the end of the 1990s, I was fortunate enough to break the story 
of the discovery of dark matter in the universe. That sent me to the New York Times. And um, the investigators who made that discovery not long after won the Nobel Prize. Over the next 20 minutes, you'll hear from scientists who are just as excited as I am about the future of this organization. You'll also hear from people who are involved directly at AIP, as well as some students who have been impacted by the organization. We hope that some of these stories resonate with you and get you thinking about how you can support science through AIP as well. AIP Foundation um, just continues the good work that AIP has been doing. Um, all the gifts um, that come through the AIP Foundation go directly to AIP and support the programs that people have been really committed to over the years. Uh, that won't change. It's the important work of the Foundation to amplify the work of AIP as a federation and an institute committed to science especially in this environment where it's being devalued and um, silenced in some ways. And so I think it's really important for us to amplify the voice of science through what we're doing. And I just think this is our opportunity to launch um, AIP in a very elevated direction uh, through the foundation. We know and believe that without diversity in the physical sciences, then we have lost talent, we've lost opportunities by not having that representation among us. So we're very intent on building that and increasing that and adding to our strength. I'm really pleased and proud of the Board of Trustees that we have for the Foundation. led by our founding chair, Dr. Franz Cordova, Sandeep Geary, Nancy Greenspan, Ray Johnson, John Kent, Mark Mercure, Michael Maloney, Mark Cardillo, Vince Cerf, John Mather, Charlie Bolden, Julia Phillips. We have a really committed group of donors who've supported AIP over the years, and we want to just increase and add to that and amplify that. So I think it's um, a great future for AIP in that way. I'm thrilled to congratulate France Cordova on this new position in selecting her as the chair of the new AIP Foundation. You've chosen not only an outstanding scientist, but also a leader in changing the ways that both science and scientists are viewed and valued. She's brought visibility to incredible accomplishments like the first detection of gravitational waves and the image of a black hole. And she's worked tirelessly for greater representation in STEM fields. I think this is an important time for science and engineering in our country. And what really makes a huge impression on people is when they see the immediate relevance to their lives, to the health and welfare of their loved ones and the strength and resilience of their communities. And new science discoveries, they can evoke wonder, of course. They lead to new understanding. And over time, to innovations that benefit people and these core concerns that people have. And evidence-based research and development is really the gold standard by which we understand, we innovate, and we make progress. I really had two big impressions from my space missions. And one is, is seeing the Earth as a complete system and understanding very viscerally how all parts of that system need to work together to thrive. And then the second big impression is really the, po the power of a team and what a team can accomplish. You know, especially um, over my four space flights and then later on when uh, I was director of Johnson Space Center. 
you know, I really came to understand that a group of people working toward a common goal that's bigger than themselves and that benefits humanity can accomplish whatever they set their minds to. And, you know, this is exactly how science happens. And uh, so I was just so fortunate to be a part of that. Some advice I would give to a student interested in going into a STEM field is that don't be afraid to make mistakes. You are probably gonna fail a couple times, but I think it's really, really important to know that that is okay. Having people who support you, whether that's other students or a professor or an advisor who will let you fail and pick you back up and work with you to find the best way for you to learn this material is I think the, the biggest thing. Organizations like SPS and Sigma Pi Sigma are really, really amazing for students, especially because at some universities, there may not be a lot of physics students, so there may not be a natural community there. So having these national organizations can really give students a platform to communicate and network with others and realize that everyone struggles with physics sometimes and that you're not alone and that you can really get help when you need it. And so having these at a national level, I think is super important. Believing in yourself, but also finding people that are gonna believe in you and be in your corner no matter what's going on is super important. I support AIP because it's a good option for supporting the projects I want to support. One thing that I love about them is that there's a summer intern program that includes two uh, summer interns to work on the Capitol Hill to learn about how physics and society interact and to learn how science policy is made. So I've been very pleased to be able to support that and thrilled with the undergraduates that have learned something about how the real world happens. It's important to invest in students because they are the ones who will carry knowledge forward, who will continue to discover the new stories around us, to apply knowledge to the challenges that continue to arise, and to basically carry forward the knowledge of human beings throughout the next thousands and millions of years. I'm thrilled that France Cordova is the chair of the board for the AIP Foundation. I've worked with her in the past and I really enjoyed that. So I know that she's very good at what she does and she will take this leadership job very well. I'm looking forward to the next century of the AIP as we carry the history with us into the future, as people begin to understand how our heroes of the past were able to make the brilliant breakthroughs that they made uh, and to enable current researchers to make continued breakthroughs through uh, support of science around the country and around the world. I believe in what AIP does. When I think in terms of the student intern program, where students have come to AIP for the summer and students learn that what they thought about science was different from the, what they learned in, in textbooks. And then when those students got together and learned from each other in terms of what each was doing, where their entire portfolio was expanded in terms of you know, what science was all about. There is nothing more satisfying, at least to me, than seeing a student having the aha moment. Uh, when the light comes on in his or her eyes, when they really understand something. So my goal as a teacher is to get people, to get students to think about what they know, how they know it, and why it's, it's applicable in this case. I'd always thought that I wanted to uh, work in industry. And I did that for a number of years and realized at the end of the day that I didn't get the uh, satisfaction uh, that I receive when I uh, work with students. I get my energy from students. One of the reasons that I believe that uh, AIP and the foundation is the correct organization for doing this is because, because AIP is a federation of scientific societies, that when it uh, approaches a problem, it brings a diversity of science to the problem. And, and because I also believe that in solving problems, if you have a diverse population, each person brings to that problem the point of view that they, that they have, that they have grown up with. Some of the challenges that I face coming into this field, the imposter syndrome, feeling like you're not good enough because you're the only one in the room that looks like you. It's so easy for one who is the minority to feel very small. What should drive you to knock down barriers is that 
You want more people. You want to create the route for other people to follow in your footsteps. And therefore, you can build kind of like this community of scientists that are that feel welcomed, that feel just as passionate and excited as you are about your work or their work or whatever work they want to do. You want people to be passionate about it. This field is hard for everyone. I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, female, male, non-binary. I don't care who you are. This field any field in STEM is hard for everyone. We want different walks of life to bring their talents and their intelligence to whatever work or project that you're doing. Never will you ever see a research project have just one person on it, let alone one type of person. You're gonna have biologists, physicists, math mathematicians. You're gonna have people from across disciplines and institutions to be able to contribute to your work as a whole. And we want people, we want diversity because we want our next generation of every color, every person, every gender to want to feel included and want to contribute to science as a whole. But at the end of the day, diversity is going to make our research and our sciences across the STEM fields solid. The American Institute of Physics keeps a lot of statistics on the physics community. And one of the glaring statistics for them was that the number of African-American students who are re receiving bachelor's degrees in physics has stagnated over um, a long period of time and that the percentage of African-Americans who earn bachelor's degrees in physics has actually decreased over time. And so AIP organized a task force to look at the problem of the underrepresentation of African-Americans earning bachelor's degrees in physics. Then they used their resources to organize the, the task force, gave the task force all the resources that they needed to do a thorough job in investigating the problem and proposing solutions. And then the American Institute of Physics really took the recommendations of the task force seriously. So they didn't just want a report that would go into a drawer, but they really wanted an investigation of the problem and proposed solutions. And, and I really commend them for marshalling the resources of all of their member societies in um, thinking about how to actually go about changing the environment of physics so that it's more welcoming for students um, from a much broader range of backgrounds, identities, and lived experiences. So initiatives like the Team Up Tax Force are crucial in that as we really come to terms with the ways in which our institutions across our society have differentially benefited whites and differentially marginalized people of color. When we think about this, we have to think about it in a structural and systemic way. And what was powerful about the Team Up report is that it focused on the environment in which individuals find themselves rather than the individuals and finding fault with them. My gratitude for the American Institute of Physics for their vision and tenacity, both in creating the task force and for moving forward on the recommendations. Good evening. As CEO of the American Institute of Physics, I want to welcome you as we celebrate the launch of AIP Foundation. We are heading into 2021, which is the 90th anniversary of the establishment of the Institute. And there's no better time to refocus on how we best uh, support and promote our mission to advance, promote, and serve the physical sciences for the benefit of humanity. We all realize our lives have been incredibly disrupted by the pandemic since it really began to affect not just our operations here at AIP in the middle of March, but as it has affected how we live our lives at home and how we live our lives in our community. And the scientific community is no different and we at AIP decided early on in this pandemic experience to to really focus on trying to understand the impact on our physical sciences. With the help of a panel of experts, we convened a rapid report earlier this year that really laid out some of the impacts that our scientists and our field are experiencing as a way to really focus how we can recover as expeditiously as possible moving forward. That's just one way in which AIP in recent uh, months and years has really focused on our role as an institute and as a federation. One of the most inspiring things I've experienced as CEO of AIP since arriving here just over two years ago has been the work of the Society of Physics Students. Last year we had FizCon, the congress where SPS and Sigma Pi Sigma come together to celebrate the science and the day-to-day -day experience of our physical science students. 
It was such an incredibly inspiring event to be a witness to the passion these future leaders of our scientific discipline, they so clearly demonstrate. As we launch AIP Foundation, one aspect that I'm really excited about is the opportunity to connect even more deeply with our donor community. And so I want to take the opportunity of the launch of the foundation today to really thank uh, all of you who've joined us here, who have been long-term supporters of AIP, to uh, welcome those of you who are new to our donor community. While there may be a new name and a new logo associated with our efforts to connect to you, the donors, I want to ensure that you all know that it's the same team here at AIP that is committed to our donor community and committed to ensuring that your support of AIP goes to the programs at the Institute that are important to you. And to those of you who perhaps have not donated to AIP in the past, um, I hope you'll consider reaching out to us so that we can engage in a conversation and really focus in on how you can support our institute as we move not only towards our 90th anniversary, but as we head towards a second century for AIP that I think is poised to achieve all sorts of new, great, impactful programs for our community. I'm excited about the future and I hope you'll join us in making it a reality. AIP supports science at so many different levels, from the undergraduate level with the Society of Physics students to more professional and academic societies. And then on top of that, they also support public policy, um, the history behind science, and really preserving and creating a community of inclusive and diverse scientists um, throughout the world and here in America as well. They have been able to enact laws, push senators and House representatives to care more about climate change, to care more about science, to care more about looking into quantum mechanics or particle physics or all of those great things that help us improve technology in our everyday lives. So by donating to AIP, you are not only supporting undergraduate students, graduate students, professional scientists, but you're also supporting the public support of science. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I lost my internship um, this past summer. So something that AIP did to help combat that and help support students during these really difficult times is they helped the Society of Physics students create the SPS Emergency Fund, which was funded by AIP and allowed students to apply for up to $2,000 um, to kind of help pay for anything that they needed, textbooks, food, um, travel back home, pretty much anything that you could possibly need. Before I was awarded the scholarship, I really had no idea what I was gonna do for the summer or how I was going to pay rent or anything like that um, because I had lost out on my internship. But this allowance from AIP kind of helped me support taking summer classes and being able to get more work done without having to worry so much about my financial situation. If you have money to donate and you care about science in any way possible at all, you should definitely donate it to AIP. So the American Institute of Physics was founded in another time of economic insecurity in the 1930s to bring together a few scientific societies, each of whom individually were struggling to publish their journals, uh, the lifeblood of the discipline, because it allows us to communicate uh, with other scientists. Over the last 90 years, however, it has evolved a number of other crucial programs that support the physical sciences. So we felt that given this new, much broader remit, it would be important for us to reach out to all those in society who feel that science is an important component of plotting our future uh, to help us in supporting these important activities. So at AIP, we're very excited to launch this new program, the AIP Foundation, and even more excited by the fact that Dr. Franz Cordova has agreed to chair our board. Her deep experience and many connections will certainly be invaluable as we launch this enterprise and move it forward. Science is just an organized way of channeling one's curiosity to reach understanding. And everyone, when they're six years old, has curiosity. 
and most people throughout their lives want to understand the way the world works. The vision of science as a solitary, white lab-coated person working 18 hours a day is completely contrary to the reality of science. It's a highly social discipline in which there's constant exchange of ideas and, and hypotheses and thinking of new ways to test them. To do that most effectively, we need the greatest diversity of backgrounds and talents and thinking styles. And that's why one of our principal goals at the American Institute of Physics is to support to the ex maximum extent we can the increasing diversity of our field. There are many wonderful charities to give money to, but for the most part, most of them are doing something in a place that's fairly static. Uh, you can go to a museum and see art that is wonderful and important to culture and to the world. You can go to a play that's also wonderful, that has uh, important lessons and, and artistry to it. But with science, you don't really have to go any place. It comes to you and it comes to the world. So when you give a little bit, a lot, your little amount makes a huge investment into a project that is going to affect the whole world. It's so important that the, the work that is being done, there are really big problems that need to be solved, such as climate change. When you look at how that is going to disrupt the lives of everybody in the world, whatever can be done by science to stop it and then reverse it is paramount. AIP uses this money to help with all of that. They help students in, in schools. They help people doing research. They're giving them the tools and the availability to the tools by funding grants and, and s small amounts to people doing research so that this work can continue and help the world. It's good to have a clear strategy about what is of value to the AIP. And I think through the foundation board, we can have that strategy. And all the board members are really committed to raising funds for the AIP worthy projects. And I think that will really enhance the value of the AIP to its members. We're all searchers of truth, and that's what science is really all about. I I think we all have to remember that um, science welcomes a real diversity of uh, approaches and backgrounds. It welcomes original thinking and it welcomes you. We all want to make a difference, make an impact on the world. And one way to do that is through philanthropy. My own experience is that it's better to give while you're uh, alive and you can see where your funds go and you can have some say in it and you can enjoy it. I get real pleasure from uh, hearing from the students that I've uh, helped fund through, through scholarships and uh, hearing their stories and how much those funds meant to them, how they could go to a particular conference, for example, where they really got inspired, or hearing from someone who attended a lecture that I co-funded and said um, that they were really transfixed by the lecture and changed what they're reading or understanding. Um, so I think that uh, there's real pleasure in, uh, in giving and the AARP through its uh, programs for scholarships for students, its lecture series and its rare book collection in uh, physics is just um, a wonderful place to uh, invest in research and inspiration and in the next generation. This has been an incredible evening, and this is just the beginning. We're so excited to see what the future of this organization can be. And we hope that you will join us on this adventure, because it is important to support science. <laughs>